On today's show, I do a deep dive into aspect ratio. Why do we have different ratios? Why is it important to you? Welcome everyone, my name's Chris, and this is your Weekly Tech Vibe. Before we go any further, I need to do a brief rundown on what aspect ratio is. Simply put, aspect ratio describes a relationship between an image width and its height. It is expressed as two numbers, separated by a colon, such as 16 by 9. It should also be noted that in cinema, the standard is to use X by 1. So I'll do my best to stick to this throughout this video. And so just for reference sake, 16 by 9 is actually 1.78 to 1. With that out of the way, examples of this aspect ratio are most likely to be busy at home. Anim animated movies and James Cameron's Avatar. Yes, yeah, seriously. So it doesn't matter how big or small the image is, it's about width versus height of the visible picture. For instance, you could express ratio like this is 16 by 9 picture, is 16 inches across by 9 inches high. Obviously there's a small picture, an exact opposite of what you're looking for in big home theatre. But again, it's not about size, it's about the relationship between the width and the height. Okay, so with, that out, so with that out of the way, let's go into the history of aspect ratio and come cover some of the things like movies and shows and the technology that went with them. Way back in Thomas Edison's times, hint 1890s, he and William Kennedy Dixon invented a really primitive motion technique called kinetoscope, which showed a series of pictures on 35 millimeter paper. And what is 35 millimeter? Well, I'm glad you asked. That's four by three, like the TV your mum and dad probably had. So it's a ratio that later became known as the Academy Ratio. That's 1.375 to one. And we used to see it in certain films all the way to 1953. Why was the standard for so long? Well, some estimate it's due to the cost of developing equipment, as well as the popularity of Edison and Lumiere's cameras. And because, well, you know. And as I always say, if it's not baroque, don't fix it. <laughs> <laughs> By 1952, movie studios responded to declining cinema ticket numbers and the rise of TV. So commenced, so commenced experiments with different anamorphic ratios like 2.66 to 1 and 2.55 to 1. And for those that don't know, these aspect ratios are much wider than what we see these days. But two really interesting technologies stick out here. Firstly, widescreen image was, and still is, done either by just a simple crop meaning that you shoot full frame on 35mm and just put a black bar at the top and the bottom of the video. And folks, spoiler alert, this happens on YouTube. It's not because you use a special camera lens or sensor. No, they either just put the black bars on the top or bottom like this, or they've changed the properties of the project, or, you know, nothing special. So, the crop method was used by Cinemarama in 1952, uh, Kino Panorama and Sign Miracle. 1958. And they used three projectors and shot into a curved screen. Now this was obviously very complex and highly costly with three projectors, so it went by pretty quick, like bye bye. What is a smarter way is to utilize the entire 35mm frame by using an anamorphic lens. This technique involves putting an anamorphic lens on a camera and stretching the image vertically to cover the entirety of the film. The result? A higher quality image that's with no wasted black space. But a distorted one at that. So when a film is projected, an anamorphic lens is placed in front of the projector and the reverse squeeze happens, which expands. So that's now how we get 235 to 1. And a quick side note, the word anamorphic and its derivatives actually stem from the Greek words, meaning formed again. Talk about a perfect uh, term, eh? So, Cinemascope in 1953, Modern Anamorphic in 1957, and much later, Super 35 in 92, all did this with small differences on how they achieved it. And fun fact, Top Gun, the cockpit scenes were used, uh, they used Super 35, due to its compact size. So, a note where this applier was Italian manufacturer Technoscope in 1960. And they also use anamorphic lenses to squeeze two images onto one 35 million piece of film. So they got basically twice the amount of footage compared to other formats. When Technoscope uh, showed prints in theaters, they were uncompressed by the anamorphizing image. And so now you expand it out and you get that massive picture. So Panavision's VistaVision and Technorama, they did something unique which technique-wise can still be seen today with IMAX movies, and that's just by orientating the film on its side. As you can see here, 
With the film loaded side on, you're not losing any picture to the black bars at the top or bottom. Nope. So by 1957, the Society of Motion Picture and Television Engineers standardized anamorphic widescreen to 235 to 1. Down from 266. Why? Well, it turns out that being able to have synchronized sound on film was super important. So they obviously used a wider image, but they reduced it slightly to make way for the audio tracks. An update in 1970, still recognized today as the standard, is 239 to 1, and that's to make the splices less noticeable. But wait, what? These days, they're actually shooting on digital mediums, so why do we need to do any splices? Well, it turns out people like Quentin Tarantino, Christopher Nolan, and Steven Spielberg, they still like shooting, generally, on actual film. And by the way, if you're in Melbourne, do yourself a favor if you haven't already, and get down to the Sun Theatre in Yarraville. They frequently show ultra-wide movies in the old-fashioned film, like 70mm, with anamorphic lenses, and to give you a healthy dose of wow and nostalgia. Nostalgia. I'll put a link like down beneath, and uh, check out the screenings, and oh by the way, hashtag, this is not an ad. No. So, before I go any further, I need to mention some really important developments, which in today's terms, is like um, high definition versus 4K, and dare I say it, 8K. And this is the development in the 1950s of 70mm film, or more precisely, 65mm film. Created by Mike Todd and the American Optical Company, aka Todd AO, this format obviously doubled the size of the 35mm film and provided high resolution images compared to the smaller formats. Plus, there's no need for the complexities of Cinerama's three camera projector systems. This first movie uh, to feature it was Oklahoma in 1955, the following year, Around the World in 80 Days. Filmed industries, just like all others, imitated this format with the likes of Panavision's Super Panavision 70, Ultra Panavision 70, they same mechanically but slight 1.25 uh, anamorphic squeeze just to accommodate like an extremely wide aspect ratio. And as hinted at earlier, 70mm IMAX movies. They're actually shot on a 65mm negative, referred to as the 6570 process, and then enlarged just slightly when they do the transfer to the positive. The reason for this is they need to put the sound and the clicks either side so you can sync it. Now during my research I discovered that um, there's lots of different ratios out there, it's 185 to 1, 239, and some European countries even have 1.66 to 1, that's like 14.94 to 9, yeah, something like that. In Australia, our TV broadcast standard is 16 by 9, so why did we get 16 by 9, or more correctly, 177 to 1? Because they all fall somewhere in between the middle of different aspect ratios, so you get a wider picture with minimal loss with the black bars. This means that when we're watching something like uh, you know, um, somewhere on the screen here, um, 185 things, or maybe 235, you get what the director intended. But those pesky black bars of varying sizes can be annoying and I get your frustration. So now, now I'm one for preserving what the creator had in mind. And when she or he or she um, thought about bringing something to the screen, so take a look at this clip from Forrest Gump. First up is the original 235 ratio. Notice the black bars? All right, now let's crop it to the old four by three. No bars, but you're missing out on a lot of the picture. Now, 16 by nine. This is to show you what you're missing if you crop it again. And finally, back to what the director intended. So I hope you can see that by cropping for the display at home, you're doing the movie a, a terrible, an a terrible injustice. And not just you're not getting the full impact of what the cinematographer, director, and editor wanted you to see. After all, would you cut 20% off a page of a book just to make sure that it filled the page? No, no, just no. So we've covered the history of different aspect ratios, but why wide or ultra wide? Well, there is no best answer for this. So as stated earlier, history has shown us that in response to declining cinema attendees due to like TV, but I think more scientifically, I'll go with the general consensus on this, and that is we all actually see like in wide format. Your visual cortex is only capable of um, capturing so much. So described as your field of view, um, you could be saying to me, hey, Chris, I definitely see more than that. But you know what? Your brain can only process so much information. And so as such, you realistically only see in this little narrow part in front of you. And as such, you guessed it, 
widescreen has been widely adopted and continues to do so more and more these days. Wow, it took this long to get to this point? Come on, yeah it did, but there is a really interesting history around this and the technology that made it all possible is fascinating. I learned a lot researching this story and I've got a lot more to share with you. So next episode will be on what this means to home theater and what equipment to buy. If you enjoyed this so far, hey, do me a favor, consider subscribing to the channel. I do things on technology, home theater tech and more. And I put videos out every Wednesday and Friday with a podcast available everywhere where you can get them, like iTunes, Anchor FM, hey. So put your comments down below if you think I missed anything, and I reckon I did because there's a really rich and fascinating history around this stuff. And if not, friends, until next time, stay techie. What a wonderful world.